Um, hello, my name is Wen Kai Chen, and we're group three. And here's our group members, Tyler Venomat, Ashton Fryers, Nicholas Gray, and Abinov Koda. And today we're going to present the paper, it's called uh, Eyes Wide Shot, Exploring the Visual Shortcomings Multimodal LLMs. And here's our outline. Uh, first, introductions, and then related works, and then uh, the MMVP benchmark, and then the MMVP VLM benchmark. Then we'll go through experiments, result, and then conclusion. So first, let me give you some of the introductions. So um, our, our main concern of this paper is, uh, is, vision, is vision good enough for the language? Like uh, many multimodal LLMs, they have like, really ob obvious qu qualitative errors. So, and what exactly are those shortcomings and is there any method that we can measure them? So like those popular multimodal LLMs, they all struggle with the visual details and they all use clip for their base vision encoder. So this paper point out that the clip vision encoder might be the bottleneck of this kind of problem. And let me show you some uh, examples of the, uh, the bottleneck. So the example here is based on the GPT-4B. So uh, we can see the picture here. We feed this picture and image to the model. And we ask the model that, do you see any windows in this image? And we can see the answer here. The model gives us a negative answer no windows visible. However, if we see carefully, you can, you can see there's a window behind the mailbox, right? So from this example, we can tell that uh, those multimodal LLMs has poor vision grounding abilities. So they will give us some incorrect VQA responses. And here is the second example. So we ask the model that is the dog facing left or right from the camera's perspective? Active. So we can easily tell that the dog is facing to the left, right? However, the answer from the model is facing to the right. And moreover, um, the model will give us some explanation of the answer, which is also incorrect. So from this example, we can tell that the model uh, sometimes will have the hallucination on incorrect responses. So how can we measure these inaccuracies? Uh, recently, there are some uh, related benchmark that we can evaluate on those uh, problems. So first is the poll. Uh, this will evaluate on the hallucination. And second one is MM bench. And this is basically evaluate on the perceptions and reasoning problems. And the third one is MM bet. So we use it to evaluate on multiple visual language capabilities. And in this paper, they come up with their own benchmark on this kind of problems. So uh, they call it MMVP, and then another one is MMVP VLM. And they also uh, come up with some approaches to uh, solve these problems. They call it mixture of features. And there are two ways they apply it. One is adaptive, additive, and another one is interleaved. So first, I want to talk about how they construct their MMVP benchmark. So first of all, they will uh, select some image from this data set, ImageNet and Lion Aesthetics. So first step is they will find the clip blind pairs. They will use a clip encoder and a Dino V2 encoder to do this. So what is clip blind pair? Let me give you some examples. So uh, as we can see here, uh, we got two images here, right? So on the semantic level, we know uh, on the they, they both have an ego, ego in the image. However, on the pixel level, we can tell that they're really different. Like this image, uh, we take it from a further perspective, and the ego is facing to the right. However, this one, we took it at the like near, we, we took it at near space. Uh, perspective and the ego is uh, facing to the camera. And here is another example. 
like uh, from the semantic level, they are really similar. They all have bridge and the, the ocean and the sky. However, on the pixel level, they're really different. We can tell that the bridge here is uh, near to us, and but the bridge here is really far away. And there are some clouds in this image. So um, how can how can they find this kind of clip for blind paired image? So first, um, they will uh, put the image through the clip encoders and Dino V2 encoders. So um, first thing we have to make sure uh, the image pair, they have a close distance in clip space. This means that they have uh, similar meanings on semantic levels. And then we will measure that if they have a larger distance on Dino V2. This means that although they have uh, similar meanings on semantic level, but they have like really different uh, image, uh, they are like very different on the pixel levels. So uh, we, we set the thresholds here. So if the image has a similarity uh, greater than 95% uh, on clips and also have a similarity less than 60% on Dino V2, then we call this image pair is a clip blind pair. So after we have this uh, clip blind pairs image, we will give it to the human and tell them to give us some descriptions and annotations of, of those images. And we will uh, come up with some questions. We will make up some questions based on those annotations. So how, how do we actually do that? So for example, here's our clip blind pairs. And then we will give it to the, some of humans and they will give us some description, like for example, uh, the dog's head in the top image is resting on the carpet and the dog on the bottom image, the head is rest lying on the ground or on the floor. So based on this annotation, we can uh, come up with this close-ended question here. So after we got the question image pair, we can use them on benchmarking uh, various multimodal LLMs. And we will later on analyze on their results. So how do we do the benchmarking? So first we get our image question pair, and then we will feed it through the multi-model LLMs. So in this in this in this example, uh, uh, can, we can see this image, uh, the top image, the dog's head is lying on the floor, right? And the model gives us the answer on is floor. So this one is correct. However, we can see the image on the bottom. The dog's head is on the carpet. However, the model gives us a floor answer. So this is incorrect. So for this pair, we'll mark it as an incorrect pair. Only when the model get the both question correct, then we will mark it as a correct pair. So in this paper, they do several benchmarking on uh, several different uh, models. So this is some of the examples. Uh, here's the question. Is the needle point up or down? So we got like the left one point up and the right one point down. And we feed this question to GPT or V. And it get one wrong answer and one correct answer. So we mark it as an incorrect pair. And we give the same questions to Gemini Pro. And it got both questions correct. So we mark it as an correct pair. And then also we uh, feed this question to Lava 1.5 and instruct blips, and they got one answer wrong. So we mark them both are incorrect pairs. So uh, they do other several benchmark also. So here's our, the other examples. And here are the results. So as we can see, they also give the questions to the humans. So humans got like 95.7 accuracy. That means those questions is like really obvious, trivial for humans. However, uh, we want to point out that here is the random guess accuracy. So um, based on the question, we got like two questions. Uh, we got two image, right? So, and we got two kind of answer. 
And so in total, we got like four options. So the random guesses accuracy will be like 25%. So you can see like uh, there's, there are still a lot of multi length, um, uh, there are still a lot of model, uh, their accuracy is below the random guesses. So this indicate that the clip encoder have some serious problems. And then uh, my teammate Tyler will give you more <laughs> details about MMVP VLM. Thanks, Jay. So um, to add on to the MMVP benchmark, we create a new benchmark, which is a subset of MMVP. Um, so now we now that we have these benchmarks that can kind of analyze these like text to image um, relations, we want to be able to find a way to categorize them um, into um, classes that we can then run metrics off of. So the way they do this in the paper is that they simply just ask GPT-4, um, which kind of makes sense, right? Because given like 300, in this case, MMVP is 300 question answer pairs. Um, for each clip blind pair. Um, so to like contextualize that into a given set of classes would be kind of difficult for a human because like imagine you're reading that many. Um, so thankfully we can prompt GPT-4 um, by asking, you know, I am analyzing an image embedding, embedding model. Um, can you go through the questions and options trying to figure out some general patterns that the embedding model struggles with? Please focus on the visual features and generalized patterns that are important to the vision models. Um, it's just important to like emphasize that we are giving it just the text for the question answer pairs. Um, so after the prompt is where we just simply list out all the question answers. Um, and it's also just kind of just to bring, uh, bring up that MMVP is only 300 uh, question answer pairs per clip blind pair. So it easily fits within the context window for GPT-4. Um, so GPT-4 discovered nine visual categories. Um, we'll go through each of these uh, soon. And the important part is that they took a subset from um, ML MMVP of these categories and balanced the data set such that there were 15 categories per, um, or 15 clip blind pairs per category that GPT-4 um, came up with. So first we're gonna go the first category, um, orientation and direction. So I'll kind of describe the image for the first time and then we can kind of go through a, a couple of them. So um, this is a little bit of a confusing figure from the paper, but the main idea is that these green arrows are correct uh, answers. So in this case, we're running inference on EVA01 um, and the correct answer for this image is that the rabbit is facing to the right so here we see, you know, a picture of a rabbit facing to the right. In the bottom, we see a picture of a rabbit facing to the left. And just kind of to really bring from the point, this is a clip blind pair. As you can see that these are like extremely similar images. However, the model can't differentiate between the two closed ended questions. So we're actually telling it the answers. We're telling it, you know, one of these rabbits is looking to the right. One of these rabbits is looking to the left. Which one is which? And it can't get it right. Um, so one of the classes that this belongs to, orientation and direction, um, it's just um, the direction like something is facing. So like we saw, um, like the dog is looking to the left, dog is looking to the right, um, the eagle example as well. Um, another class is presence of specific features, um, which is just like whether or not something exists or not in the image. So you can see here um, what kind of intuitively makes sense to, is that this is a clip blind pair just because of these eggs in this image. So you can see that these are like little Easter eggs and this is just like a egg basket with some sort of flower thing going on. And we ask it whether or not tulips are in the image. Um, and the this uh, EVA model can't determine whether or not, given the answer that, you know, this either has tulips or not, it can't determine um, which one is which, hence the blind pair. So um, state and condition. Um, we'll go into, there's a reason why this is bold, but just keep in mind that um, this is bold. Um, this is just another example. So like this, this one actually I kind of find funny because I can't even necessarily tell this one. Um, this is a like a, a butterfly and we ask if its wings are open or its wings are closed. And I also kind of like to point out that the human benchmark was only like 95% accurate. So like even humans sometimes can't do this. Um, again, that was an incorrect answer for the clip line pair. 
um, quantity and count. So given the two answers, one of these images has one drink, one of these images has two drink for quantity and count, um, it got the clipped blind pair incorrect. Positional and relational context. So given like two images, um, how, how do they relate to one another? So in this example, we compare like a flip-flop, a slipper to glasses. So here we see the slippers on the left, the glasses are on the right, and the glasses on the left, the slippers are on the right. Um, it can't tell, it, even given the answers for position and relation. Structural characteristics um, just focuses on like features within them. So like here we have two different sets of fruits, um, but like structurally, some of them are cut in half, some of them are not. Um, given the answers, the model can't tell the difference. Texts, this one's fairly self-explanatory. Um, just given two answers of text, which one is which? And as we know, these models don't do the best with OCR. Um, and then we have a viewpoint and perspective. So in this case, like if we're looking at it from the top or the left or the bottom or the right, um, we got this completely wrong. And then finally, we have color and appearance, which is um, fairly self-explanatory. Um, I find that the color and appearance is a little bit vague, and I kind of want to blame that on the fact that they're using GPT-4 for this. Um, just the appearance part, color makes sense, but appearance, it's a little bit vague. Um, they don't really explain too much, but that's kind of the point, right? Because um, it's just generated by GPT. But as you can see, um, the answers are dark blue sky, light blue sky, and it can't tell the difference between the two. So finally, now that we have this VLM benchmark. This actually leads to a couple really interesting um, three like main uh, just ideas that come up when you do this categorization at this high level. Um, so first off, increasing just as a general like overarching idea for all of these clip models, as you increase the number of parameters, if you recall how I said the bold, um, these bold classes, as you increase the number of parameters in the models, specifically the color and appearance and state and condition classes do better. However, th that's not true for any of the other classes. You can just keep making the any clip-based multimodal model bigger, and they don't really find like an improvement in any of those other clip blind pair classes. So here we're just gonna look at some MMVP zero shot benchmarks on these pairs. So as I said, the larger the input, or, or sorry, actually I actually didn't say this part yet. Um, a part that's worth noting is that like, as you increase, or at least my pointer, sorry. As you increase the image size, um, it also doesn't really have an effect. So as you see, these are the two same models. The only difference is that we're inputting a different size. And Hello. the same for the next. Um, yeah, and just basically, this one actually does slightly worse on MMVP, but there's just no difference. Um, there is a, as I was saying, as you increase the number of uh, parameters in the network, it does slightly better overall, but it also does slightly better on these two state and cat, or state and um, appearance and, or color and appearance and like the state of the model. So this arrow, which you can't really see, is just kind of showing the fact that as these number of parameters in general across all clip-based models. So like everything that uses a clip encoder and then has a downstream task, as the number of parameters increase, specifically these two categories in general increase in MMVP, but not in any other class, which is just super interesting. So now we're gonna kind of um, graph the here we have a graph that has just the MMVP um, VLM data set on clip, which is in blue. And then we also have, we compare that against uh, various other different clip-based methods. Um, so the important part is that like, these are the state and conditions on the left. If we order them from best to worst performing, um, it kind of makes sense that the two that do better as they get bigger are gonna be the best performing classes. What's really interesting is that if we just draw a line of best fit for the clip model, we actually can see a Pearson coefficient that suggests a linear relationship between these various clip models. So like 
lava 1.5 and instruct flip have Pearson coefficients greater than 0 0.7. Um, this line isn't perfect, but it's just to give you the idea. Um, here are the actual Pearson coefficients. Um, as you can see, there's a pretty good linear relationship between like lava and struct flip, Bard and Gemini with clip, the original clip uh, performing on MMVP VLM, um, but the sole exception of GPT-4 um, does not have like significant relationship. So um, finally, we are just going to kind of show how ImageNet does, like ImageNet zero shot accuracy doesn't really show any of these um, metrics. Like it doesn't have a way to differentiate um, these sort of fine grained patterns. So interestingly, um, the better you do on ImageNet zero shot um, until about 81%. So like if you're a clip model, um, has about an 81% or less than accuracy on ImageNet, it will do better on MMVP VLM, which is the like the nine classes category with the clip line pairs. But once you reach past 81%, you no longer have a linear correlation. There's basically, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll move it up here. So, um, so once you reach past this like bar in the middle, this like 81-ish percent, um, there's just no more linear correlation. So as you can see here, we have like a fairly obvious linear correlation. And then out of nowhere, there's just, it's kind of a uniform distribution in terms of how well they do on MMVP VLM, which is again, it's the categorization data set. Um, and then also just to kind of note the, the size of the circle represents the number of parameters in the model. So even so, you would expect that the model with the largest number of parameters would do best, but it actually does the worst, which just kind of emphasizes even more that we need better metrics that can actually measure these um, pattern like recognitions like within the image, and that we should kind of delve into this problem more. So how do we actually improve upon this? Um, the paper gives two methods. Spoiler alert, these methods don't work that well. They work pretty good, but it's really emphasized. I think the main part of this paper is just all the parts that we just went over, the metrics and the idea that there are unsolved problems. Um, and the metrics that they do give um, do solve the problem, but um, spoiler alert, they're actually, they're only pretty good at solving the problem. They're not like excellent, in my opinion. So here we have this thing called additive mixture of features. So we have a downstream language model. Um, in this case, we're using Lava, except instead of having just a clip encoder, in order to solve this problem of the uh, class of the clip blind pairs, we are going to utilize a Dino encoder. So the important part about using Dino is that Dino is a self-supervised method so like it doesn't even it doesn't take text input it's completely self-supervised so it gets a pretty it learns a very good embedding space um, so whenever it's embedding space is basically independent of the clip encoder which is why we use it to find the clip line pairs so what we literally do is that we just add an alpha parameter in front of the clip encoder and the dino encoder and then we uh, just add an adaptive layer so like the input to this adaptive layer is uh, an alpha of just 75% of whatever the clip encoding is, and then an alpha of 25% of whatever the Dino encoder is, or Dino encoder. Add it into the adapter, and then we just train the um, Llama model and the adapter. And they have uh, ablations on like different alpha parameters, so like 25, 50, uh, 75, and so forth. Um, and then also just using the Dino encoder, as well as just using the Clip encoder. So we act, we train um, using the exact same Lava uh, set. So it's just we're, the only difference between how we train this from Lava is that uh, we just have the the alpha parameters in front of the encodings when we do the addition. So here we're going to show the just the metrics. So here we just have base Lava by itself, right? without actually editing it, um, it does really bad on MMVP. So it has, so it's extremely blind to these clip blind pairs, even with the, again, just like really 
throwing out the fact that these are closed ended questions. We give it, we tell the model what the two answers are and it cannot tell the difference. So once we do this additive uh, mixture of features at an alpha ratio of like 25% for to using, that means using 25% of the encodings from Dino, um, we get slightly better and increasingly slightly better MMVP accuracies, but increasingly lower lava metrics on just the lava benchmark up until 75%. So at this, this is like the maximal MMVP score, which is kind of why I wanted to say like, spoiler alert, that's still not the best score, right? 100% is obviously 100%. Uh, it's just accuracy uh, across all of the 300 images. Um, and then just lava gets, the lava benchmark gets significantly worse. So just that's that's kind of the main idea. So how do we fix this idea? So like what's, how do we do something better? So they have this other method called interleaved mixture of features, which is instead of adding like an addition and a alpha parameter, we add two adapters now, one on top of the clip encoder, one on top of the dyno encoder. And the output of the adapters are just like interleaved and meshed together. It's a very well named <laughs> interleaved mixture of features. Um, again, I uh, just wanted to point out that the adapters are trained. Um, there are two adapters and the language model is trained. So again, we use the same, um, the same training method. The only difference is just the encoders. Um, and in this case, we are going to look at, um, this is the main idea. So here we just have lava. And then we have, um, I kind of just want to point out that the, um, again, they're really selling on the point that the increase in the image inputs um, and increasing in tokens don't increase MMVP. However, when they do interleaving of um, the, like the interleave mixture of features, um, it has significant changes in the MMVP. So we do much better. So it can now somewhat tell the difference between these clip blind pairs, but it has negligible um, increases or decreases in lava and hope. I say negligible. In this case, it does get slightly better. So like it is a little bit better on the lava metric and the Pope metric. Um, and again, we can use the Pope metric because we're using closed ended question answer pairs. Um, but it's, I said negligible because like when we increase the, when we, when we increase the lava 1.5, it's now not actually increasing. Whenever we use interleave mixture of features, um, it's, you know, kind of, it's a little bit up and down. But the point is, is that it is, um, it does increase MMVP um, notably. And that's one of the things that the paper doesn't really mention too much is like, there's kind of this trade-off, which we'll talk about at like the very end. But I just wanted to point it out here while we're looking at it. Um, as the models get bigger, the this like interleaved mixture of features doesn't help as much. So this seems to only really help on like small number of parameters. Um, so that's so that's like the main idea of the paper. That's pretty much it. Now we're just going to get to the like limitations and our, our conclusion. So uh, the biggest kind of most obvious limitation, right, is that there's only 300 of these clip blind pairs. Um, that's not like a big data set. And then what's an even bigger limitation is that MMVP VLM is an even smaller subset of MMVP. So like. There's only 135 of those clip blind pairs, um, each class again containing 15 images. And also, we just kind of want to point out that there is like, we are asking GBT to do this classification. So there's necessarily going to be some kind of ambiguity. So if, for example, we're only using the text inputs to do these classifications and categorizations. So, for example, if, um, say, we have pictures of horses, right? Like we have a picture of a white horse and a picture of a brown horse. And we ask if the horse is to the left of the pig. Now, GPT might categorize that as a, um, like a, a orientation class. However, it's not just an orientation class. It's also a color class because you have a brown horse and a white horse. So their method, it's, you know, that could be improved. Um, just like pointing out that that's a, very big limitation. Um, 
it's also just computationally expensive, right? We're we're adding an entire Dino model on top of this just to get like um, a small increase in, in MVP. So like hopefully that can fit on your GPU. Uh, Dino is pretty good at like doing distillation, but like still, um, is it worth it? To be honest. Um, and also, we just want to point out that the paper we looked everywhere for this. Um, we even like looked in their GitHub to an extent, like to the far like the amount we could. We couldn't actually find what adapter they used whenever um, they did the training on Lava. Like they state that they can that the adapter can be an MLP, a Q former, um, or gated attention, but they didn't like explicitly state if they used any of that whenever they're doing this training. So just that would have been really nice. Um, also, it would have been really nice to have some relations on uh, if they could have frozen lava or not. Like, can they just train the adapter? Um, how much better does that do? Like, do you really have to retrain the entire um, large language model again? Um, but that's just the limitations. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then of course, as uh, the lava parameters increase, um, the interleaf, the visual grounding is also just, oh yeah, sorry. Like as the model gets bigger, right? The actual interleaving mixture of features doesn't help as much. So it only helps in the smaller models, which is just a limitation. So final thoughts. Um, clip, all of these models are clip based. Clip, we obviously have, we've shown that there is a correlation between all of these clip based models on MMVP VLM and that all of these clip based models suffer from the same categorization failures, um, which just, you know, for every single downstream task, this is just an open problem. Um, increasing the model size and the training data set can't fix most of these shortcomings. Um, interleave mixture features works to an extent um, without like messing with other um, uh, metrics on like additive mixture features did. Um, and just in general, further research is needed to like explore these fine grain text image visual patterns, right? Like if you have these blind pairs, how, what kind of ways can we quantitatively measure them instead of just as a human, obviously being like, oh, this is, this AI is wrong. Like how, like how can we create metrics that we can then ideally calculate losses on and like train new models, like fine tune them better. Um, so yeah, that's, 